Hi, I'm Greg Scott, and welcome to week two, day one of our 30, my 30-day 30 challenge to do a presentation um, five days a week for four weeks. Today, I, I want to talk about, um, this is part two, our credit reporting system is an identity theft waiting to happen, and I, we talked about part one about that last week. Tonight, I want to talk about how to fix it. Um, Part one, I talked about how it's broken and why it's broken, and I'm going to post a link right below here in the in the chat, uh, right here, right here, and right here, and right here. Greg Fellman, good to see you. Thanks for joining, man. Um, here's the deal. The credit reporting industry has three players. They're consumers, people like me. We borrow money. Creditors loan money, and credit reporting agencies help creditors assess risk. A huge problem with this system is Consumers are not customers. We're not customers. We're raw material. Credit reporting agencies keep all kinds of personal data about us, but we have no say-so to its integrity. That's just wrong. Another biggie is it was a dumb idea when the credit industry started to use social security numbers as authenticators, and it's an even dumber idea today. Whoever thought that we could assign everyone a secret number and then share that secret number with everyone and their cousin and then still keep it a secret? Well, they must have just been drunk when they thought that up. Ted Ashley, thank you for joining. Good to see you. We need a credit reporting system that encourages mutual accountability and gets rid of the social security number problem. I like to call it the rock, paper, scissors solution. But first, we need some theory. Bear with me on this. Encryption is when you apply a key and an algorithm and you convert plain text into cipher text. That's encryption. Decryption is just the opposite. Apply the key and the algorithm and turn the cipher text back into plain text. That's the theory. That's it. That's all you need to know. It, it didn't hurt. Don't let the word encryption scare you. We've been doing this for, for more than 2,000 years. The Romans did it way back before Jesus was born. Here, I'll give you a quick demo. Let's encrypt the word hi, H-I. We're going to encrypt that with a Caesar, a Caesar cipher with a key of one. H-I, that's the, that's the plain text. We're going to apply a key of one. That turns into J-K. That's our encryption. That's all there is to it. That's encryption. That's what it is. The theory is the same now today as it was 2,000 years ago. The concepts are identical. The implementations today with computers and stuff are a whole lot more complicated, but that's how it works. Now, let's say, what if we, well, what if we could cook up a method where we encrypt with one key and we decrypt with another key? There's a whole bunch of possibilities if we could do that, and a generation ago, some really, really smart computer scientists figured out how to do it. Now, <clears throat> today we call that public key crypt, public key cryptography. Say that fast three times. And we use it every day. Every single one of us use it every day when we buy stuff across the internet. And so it's, it's not anything new. I propose that we use the same technology to fix the credit reporting system. And here's how. Credit re uh, here's how we do it. Credit reporting agencies will keep the same data about me, but, we, but, in, but, they in, but everything is encrypted with my public key. Anytime I do a credit event, my creditor encrypts it with my public key and sends it in. And my public key is just right in there in the database so everybody can find it. So it's easy to encrypt. Anyone that wants to do a credit report about me, that wants to look at that data, they have to decrypt it with my private key. My private key. I control it, which means I control who looks at my data. My social security number is just another field about me. It's not an authenticator anymore. That's the basis for the whole thing. There's one more piece to this puzzle. I don't want to remember this 512-bit key that I, need to, that I need to use for encryption and decryption. And so we'll use a pass. I, I don't want to memorize that private key. And so we'll use a passphrase hash. <laughs> my mother wears army boots. That'll be the passphrase. I remember it. Don't use my mother wears army boots for your passphrase because it's already taken. That's my memory aid, and I can and, and the passphrase does it. There's a whole bunch of other details around this, and I'm going to post another link with more detail for how we pull for how we put this together. This is about a 20 minute recorded presentation, and I've only got a budget of about four minutes or five minutes or so tonight that I'm already about ready to bust. There's there's the presentation with more detail. Now. How do we make this happen? 
Let's make some noise and let's do this. Write your representatives, push like mad, write your senators, write President Trump, write everybody and their cousin, bug people, make some noise. Let's finally take some real steps and put a dent into identity theft. And finally, I want to share one more blog post, so just kind of a bonus. This is um, a blog post about the perils of passwords. I'm going to paste it in right here, boom and boom. And yeah, there we go. Passwords must die, long live passphrases. Passphrases are way better than passwords. They're easier to remember and they're harder to hack. We should, in, we should adopt passphrases everywhere and forget about passwords with the single special characters and random, num random digits and stuff like that. Okay. It's, uh, I've burned my budget again of time. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. And share this with everybody that you know, everybody and their cousin. And take a look at, at a book called Virus Bomb on my website, www.dgregscott.com. Thanks for putting up with me.